The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today again is the Old Testament reading for this past Sunday from 1 Kings chapter 3. We're looking right now at verses 5 to 9 in particular, where it says, At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and given, have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? My dear friends in Christ, Yesterday, as we began our look at this reading, we saw this portion of Scripture in which God said to Solomon, ask for whatever you want me to give you. And what we said is, what would you ask for if God gave you a blank check, kind of like he did for Solomon on that particular day? What would you ask for? What Solomon ended up asking for was wisdom, wisdom so that he could properly govern this people of the Lord's. He said to the Lord, so give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? But, but before he asked for that wisdom, he said, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. He knew that he needed God's help and he knew that he on his own wouldn't be able to govern this great people of the Lord's. He couldn't handle that responsibility on his own. So yesterday I said that the key to this question that God was asking Solomon about what he wanted like that. The key to that question isn't really so much what he asked for. The key thing in this question, and the key thing for us as well, for Solomon it was his recognition. For us it's our recognition when we think of that question, what would you ask for, that, that we are weak on our own that we're sinful people, that we have a sin problem, and that on our own, what we would deserve is eternal punishment. So as we hear that question, we, we thank God that, well, he has revealed to us that we have that sin problem, but then we also and especially thank him for the fact that he has revealed to us the answer to our sin problem. And the answer to our sin problem, that's Jesus Christ, our Savior. In our reading, Solomon said to the Lord, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. God did show great kindness to David, think about it. He he was a shepherd as a boy, as a youth, and then what happened is God came to him and through Samuel the prophet told him that he was going to be the next king over Israel, following King Saul. Well, then another event that happened in his life is that the young boy, David, he, he went out and he defeated the giant Goliath, obviously a victory that God gave to him. And then when Saul became 
jealous of David's popularity and his victories. Well, what God did is God protected David and, and got him safely to the throne there in Israel. He made him king. And under David, well, Israel became a strong, a very powerful nation of basically an empire at that particular time. And under David, well, what David and his people were able to do is a lot of the legwork, a lot of preparation to get ready for the temple that Solomon would end up building. David, a wealthy, a very powerful man, God definitely showed to him great kindness. However, when Solomon says of his father that he was faithful to the Lord and righteous and upright in heart, we're probably inclined to think of David's downfall. And that's when he had the affair with Bathsheba. And because she became pregnant, well, what David tried to do is he tried to conceal his sin. And he had Bathsheba's husband put on the front line of battle so that he'd be killed so that that sin could possibly be concealed, but it, it wasn't. Solomon surely knew all about that. And since he knew all about that, how was it that he could say about his father that he was faithful to the Lord and righteous and upright in heart? Well, he could say that about David, his father, for the same reason that he could say that about himself and for the same reason that we also can say about ourselves that we are, as it says here, faithful to the Lord and righteous and upright in heart. We're like David and Solomon. We're sinners like they were. We're, we aren't righteous on our own, and the fact of the matter is is that we need God's grace, and thankfully, we have God's grace. God's grace, God's undeserved love for, for David, for Solomon, it's that grace of God that means that David could look at himself, Solomon could look at his dad, Solomon could look at himself, and we can look at ourselves and, and say of ourselves, of all of us, we are faithful to the Lord and righteous and upright in heart. So if you're troubled by your sins, by particular past sins, and perhaps here instead of saying if you're troubled, I should say when you're troubled by your past sins. And the reason I say that is because Satan loves to use this temptation against us. He loves to accuse us of our sin and make us feel guilty and make us think that, that God couldn't forgive us for our sins. So when we feel guilty about that, remember that, yes, we're sinners. We've fallen short of the glory of God. We need God's grace. But thankfully, we have. God's grace. We have God's grace. And that means that, well, yeah, we can go to God like David would have had to, like Solomon would have had to. We can go to them like, go to God, well, like the parable, like the tax collector in Jesus' parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, like the tax collector who said to, to, to God, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And know that, yes, we need God's grace and we have God's grace. We have God's grace. God's grace, it means that when God looks at us sinners who would deserve his punishment, well, he sees people who, like David, because of Christ and through faith in Christ are faithful to God 
and righteous and upright in heart. And we're people that God wants forever with him in heaven. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, when your law speaks to us, it shows us our sin. It shows us that we deserve your wrath and punishment, but thank you for the gospel, for the message of Jesus the Savior, because it tells us that we who need God's grace thankfully have God's grace. We are so richly blessed. When we hear you saying to Solomon, ask for whatever you want me to give you, help us always to remember that all we really need is your grace, and because of Jesus, we have your grace. Thank you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.